Hi and welcome to the third lesson in the series of my driving lesson videos. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at moving off so we're finally going to get the car moving and it gets a bit more exciting from now on. So in previous videos we've looked at the car controls and we've looked at how to set the car up but now let's actually look at how to move away. So the first thing I'm going to do is turn the car on um, to be honest because it's a really hot day and I want to get the air conditioning turned on. So we look before at the key positions where you turn it one, two, three. There are two things that you need to check before you actually turn the car on. One is that the handbrake is applied properly, so it should be up all the way, which we've covered in other videos. And the other is that the gear should be in neutral. Now, there are times you may turn on in gear, um, but for the moment we're not going to. You need to understand when you learn to drive that you learn things in quite a basic way to begin with. So, some of the things we say now, I may con contradict later on by saying it indifferently. That's just because you need to learn the basic ways to begin with. Like the saying goes, you need to learn to walk before you can run. So anyway, I'm going to make sure the handbag's on, the gear is in neutral, I'll do this by moving it left. You can't see the gear stick at the moment, but all I'm doing is I'll move it left, I'll let go and it bobbles back to the middle. Um, I'll try and show that now, if I move the camera down, you can see the gear stick there in, I hope you can see that, the gear stick there is in neutral. But I move it that way, bobbles, it's now in neutral. So, put the camera back. That's when it's now safe to turn on. Okay, so I'm going to turn on. Let's get the camera ready there. That should be okay. So I'll turn the key to number three. You don't have to go one, two, three, by the way. You can just turn it one big move. So I'm going to turn it on now. Now I'm just going to put the air conditioner on because it's a really hot day today. It's a lot better than the weather I've had in previous videos. Right, so it's a big topic, so let's start it slowly. First things first. Um, how do you know the car is turned on? Now I know this sounds like a really daft question and people will say why are you asking me how I know if the car is turned on? Well there's a very good reason. At the moment it's quite obvious now you, you might not hear this because I'm using my lapel microphone which cuts out a lot of external noise but um, if I just let you listen now to the sound that the engine is making on this camera. So you hear that you can hear the engine revving. It's obvious it's turned on but when you're in a busy high street or on the main roads Sometimes pupils can stall and they don't realise they don't know they're stalled. So, do you remember in the previous video we looked at the rev counter, which is this dial down here? Now, I don't have a camera on there just now, um, but the rev counter has gone to just below 1. So, it's telling me, do you remember I spoke about that power meter on the left with the numbers 1 to 6? If you haven't seen my previous video, just look at that video before you watch this one. But the revs are now on just below 1, they're on 0.8. That's how you can tell if the car is turned on, because when it's turned on, the revs will be just below number one. It's different in different cars, but most cars are around about number one, normally just below. If it's a cold morning, they might be just above, because the engine can sense it's cold, and it puts a few more revs through to make sure it doesn't stall or turn off. So, there are many times or lessons when people think they've stalled the car, and they haven't, and they're trying to frantically turn it back on, and it won't turn back on. Why not? because it's already turned on. So what I should do now is I should turn the engine off and I will actually move that camera from the windscreen onto here just so you can see that for now. So I'll turn the engine off there. Okay, I should just move this camera and I'll be back in a few seconds to show you that. Okay, here we are then, so you can see now the controls. So the rev counter on the left. I hope you can see this better than you could last time because I know this shot wasn't great on the first video that I did. But you can see now the rev counter on the left is on zero. So if I turn the engine on, uh, I'm going to turn it on here. You can see all the controls come on and it goes to just below one, just like that. Now, something I didn't do then that I could have done is hold the clutch pedal down. It's a good idea when you turn a car on to hold the clutch pedal down because what that does, it reduces the load on the battery. So, especially in the winter if it's really cold or you've got an older car, um, it's a good idea to hold your clutch down as you turn the engine on and it helps you to turn on. There are many cars now where um, you actually can't turn on unless the clutch is down. So um, you have to hold your clutch pedal down or the car won't let you turn on. It's a safety measure so that you're not accidentally in gear because if you were to turn on in gear your car could go flying forwards um, before you really want it to. So yeah, uh, make sure the clutch, if you can, have the clutch down like that. So I'm going to reposition this camera now because you don't need to see the rev counter again. I'm going to be talking about the revs but you don't actually need to be watching them because um, you just don't. I mean when you move away in the car you don't often look at the rev counter itself because you can hear the engine and that's a better way of doing it. So I'm going to reposition the camera now 
and then I'll be back. Okay, so we're back. We're going to start looking now at how to make a car move off using pedal cam and the forward camera. In fact, all the cameras. The pedal cam is going to be quite handy here because you can see me operating the pedals really well there. So, let's have a look at that diagram that we had from the first lesson. Now, if I bring the diagram up on the screen now, can you notice the two differences? Now, one of them is there's now a red area on the diagram, which I've called a biting point. There's also another difference though, and there's going to be some fun and games in my videos like this. Can anyone spot what the other difference is? There's something that I've changed on the diagram since last time, so let me know in the comments below if you can spot what that is. Okay, so how do you make a car move? Well, if you look at this diagram, you'll see that when the clutch is down like this, the two metal plates, do you remember we said there were two metal plates, and when you put the clutch down, they come away from each other, like on the diagram, when the clutch is up the two plates connect and they're gripping together. Now the reason it's called a clutch is because that's what it does, it clutches. You've probably heard the phrase clutching at straws, um, which is what I often do in my life. But yeah, um, when you're clutching, you're sort of grabbing something, holding on to something, you're clutching it. So the clutch is those two plates coming away like that, they're going together and gripping. I often use my hands as, um, as a way of demonstrating this with people. So when your clutch is down, two plates of the engine are apart. Now I'm going to move the gear stick over into first gear. I know you can't see the gear stick but all I'm doing is I hold the gear stick, move your left, push it up and it's in first gear. In later videos if I need to I'll have a camera on the gear stick but for now it's just in first gear which is quite easy to do. So what I need to do first of all, the first thing I get people to do is you've got to find the biting point. Now the biting point is the point where those two plates come together so if you look at the plate on the left and the plate on the right, at the moment they're apart, they're not connected. So I can rev the engine, I can do anything I want, I can change the gear, nothing's going to work because the engine is not connected to the rest of the car. Now if I bring the clutch up very slightly, you'll notice by looking at the forward facing camera and possibly the inside cameras as well, that there's a slight change in the, the, the way the car looks. The bonnet is going to often go up in the air, um, because it depends if you want to hill this. By the way, today we're looking at moving off on a flat. Um, there are different methods of moving off. There's flat, uphill and downhill. This is just moving off on a flat today. Um, so if I bring the clutch up slightly, you're going to feel and hear the car. Now I know in this video you can't feel it because you can't feel things in a video. But like I said, this is just to give you an idea of what a driving lesson is like. So if I bring the clutch up, can you hear that noise? Do you just sit out the way the front of the car? Watch the front camera, watch the way the car moves a bit. Like that. See the way it's bouncing in the air like that? Just like that. That's when you've got the biting point. So I'm going to raise my clutch again now. First of all, you must find the very lower edge of the biting point. Now, if you look on the diagram, the red part where it says biting point, um, it's about the thickness of a pound coin. And that's the term that off driving instructors often use. It's a handy term because everyone knows how thick a pound coin is. You want to find the very bottom of that point. So I'm going to raise the clutch now to about here and that is the very bottom of the biting point so I hope you can see that on the pedal camera my foot's just about a third of the way up now this is different in different cars if you have for example a sports car put it back in neutral just for now so I can lift my clutch up you can't lift your clutch up all the way unless you're in neutral so I'll put the gear stick back into neutral the clutch now comes up and that's the only time you can really lift your clutch freely like that when you're in neutral or of course when the car's turned off some cars like sports cars have a very low biting point here so you can get moving quicker when you get a brand new car i mean i've been lucky enough to have lots of brand new cars because of my job normally when you get them the clutch biting point is right on the floor like there and after a week or two or a day or two of driving it comes up and gets higher if you find your biting point is really high at the top end like here so you have to bring the clutch pedal up a long way before it moves it doesn't always mean your clutch is damaged but it can it's normally when your clutch is on the way out and it's about to go but some cars are just made like that so anyway that's the first thing you've got to do now if you look at pedal cam again that's the, the camera on the pedals are called pedal cam if i go into first gear and bring the clutch up a little bit that there would be good but it's very easy to get it wrong now the difference between right and wrong is about the thickness of a debit card most people say credit card but i don't like credit cards so i prefer to use debit cards so if I show this now, look at pedal cam again. So that there would be good, but this here is no good, or not as good at least. So that 
is okay that is too high and that is far too high you can feel the car in real life you'd feel the car pulling quite hard there and he wants to go now the engine works on the front two wheels in most cars it's different and um, many german cars it works on the rear wheels four by fours he drives all four wheels but this is a fairly basic standard car so the front wheels are trying to pull away but what's holding me still the handbrake do you remember on the first lesson we said the handbrake works on the back two wheels in most cars again there's all differences and in this car i'm talking about now it works on the back two wheels the handbrake and the engine works on the front two wheels so if i go like this this is the handbrake holding the car still so that there is the first thing you've got to do when you drive lessons well one of the first things after you set the car up and done the controls is find the biting point just about there now normally you would never operate the clutch without the gas so you'd normally be pressing the gas down but like i said we're taking it step by step we're not going to rush into all this if you rushed your first few drive lessons it will fall apart later on um, i'm not running down other instructors but i've had many pupils come to me and they said oh in my last instructor i was moving after 10 minutes and i was doing roundabouts after half an hour yeah well that soon falls apart because the pupils don't fully understand how to make the car move um, so spend a lot of time doing this we're not dragging things out we're not ripping people off you've got to make sure you can do this thoroughly imagine you're on a busy main road now and you've got cars behind you the lights go green and you're not used to doing this you don't want to be stalling when there's lots of cars around you can put the people into a, a state of panic and stress um, it's stressful enough so anyway I don't know I ramble a bit sometimes by the way but again, this isn't a real driving lesson I'm kind of talking to myself now on a real lesson as you'll see in my real series of video lessons driving lessons coming soon um, it's a lot different because there's feedback from the people and we're kind of chatting to each other and they're saying oh does this do that and I'll say oh no that will do that it's a lot more natural when you actually teach someone but anyway a um, bit of a turn in the road going on there look so clutch goes down all the way into first gear so we've set the clutch we found the biting point but what other pedal did you say we needed to use the gas now the reason you should not move off without the gas is quite simply you haven't got much power that rev counter now is still on 0.8 just below number one on the revs this is something you need to understand you should always have the gas pedal pressed nearly always when you move off I never say always because nothing ever always applies in every situation but we're going to try pressing the gas pedal now now the rev counter, I know you can't see the rev counter but I'm going to get the rev counter to stay on about 1.5 so if I press the gas now that goes about 1.5 ish and it stays there, it's gone down again now but it stays there about 1.2, 1.3 somewhere around there you must be able to hold your foot still on the gas pedal like that so it's dead still, the engine's not moving, the revs aren't moving at all. It's very hard to do this when you first begin driving. A lot of pupils are like this. The revs are up and down and up and down. It's, oh, I can't move on my feet still. It takes a good half an hour or so of practice to get used to that. So don't worry about that. If you move off without the gas, now a lot of people say you can move off without the gas. Yes, you can, but it doesn't work very well. I'm not going to get into that now. That will be for a separate video. Um, which is going to be called diesel versus petrol because um, this is a diesel car but petrols work differently I'm not going to get into this now but there's a different way that they work and let's just put it simple for now press the gas when you move off if you don't it's easier to stall because with the gas you've got some power like that without the gas you're trying to move with minimum power it doesn't work very well it can work I know but not very well so what I'm going to do now so I'm going to combine the two things that we've done so far, combine them so we did them both at the same time. So I'm going to go clutch down into first gear. Before the clutch comes up, I press the gas and I want the gas so the rev counter goes to about 1 point something, 1.2, 1.3, somewhere around there, anywhere around that area. It's worth mentioning when you've got air conditioning on as I have now, um, it's actually a little bit harder to drive because the air conditioning runs off the engine so it does make it slightly harder to move away I've got it on very low and of course I'm not a learner so I can manage this but when you're learning if you're struggling um, you might want to turn the air conditioning off it makes things a little bit easier depends on your car again so I'm going to go into first gear I went back to neutral there I'm pressing the gas a little bit so it revs like that I'm doing the clutch a little bit so it pulls you know so it pulls very slightly not much but a little bit 
and the engine out is humming nicely sounds quite a nice sound or well, nice to me <laughs> so yeah it's like that I'm gonna now go gas off clutch down so the engine now is just running idle again idle is when you're not using any revs the engine's just ticking over so what I did there I pressed my gas down a little bit then I brought the clutch up to the biting point now of course this is what you do when you move off so I'll get a little bit of gas so the revs go up higher a little bit of clutch and the car starts to pull and the handbrake is holding the car still so that's the position that you want to be in so that you're ready to move off and the car now wants to go so I put my clutch down, gas comes off the next stage is to actually make the car move so when you've got the pedal set you would then release the handbrake and that would make you move off now yes there are other things you need to do before that but remember we're taking it step by step so what we're going to do and this is much easier in real life than watching a video because you'd actually be doing this now it's clutch down one set the gas so it's about one point something 1.2 1.3 clutch up slightly now normally i'll check around i'm just looking around now there's not much going on but pretend i didn't do that because the people wouldn't always be doing that at this stage the handbrake comes down when the handbrake's released what i need to do is lift the clutch slowly after i press the gas down slightly so in a moment I'm going to be pressing the gas down like that and lifting the clutch up. Now let's look at that diagram again never had the biting point. When you lift the clutch the only place it actually does anything is in the central third about there or the middle. So when you lift the clutch you can't just go bang that will stall. But if you do it too slowly you're not going to be finding the biting point because the biting point you remember is where the engine's pulling away. So when you've got the pedal set like that and you want to move off you've got to release the handbrake gas goes down then the clutch very slowly comes over like this it's crawling up like that and like that and like that and it connects now when you're an experienced driver you don't have to do it the same way but when you're a new driver you have to do it like this so if you look at my hands here imagine the clutch plates are together just about rubbing together like that they need to slowly connect to so the lock and lock and lock and grip like that and then the car will move off smoothly what makes the car stall is when you lift the clutch too quickly so if I just went first gear boom I've stalled the car so the problem a lot of people have is that they go clutch down into first gear I'm not still in neutral now but pretend I'm in first gear they're trying to move off and they're thinking where is this biting point where is it where is it now because they're panicking and the car's behind them normally blasting the horn saying get out of the way the people then lift the clutch really quick at the exact time when they should be doing it slowly so you should lift your clutch quickly to the biting point slowly through the biting point and then lift it up quickly afterwards because remember your clutch pedal if I try and get my foot sinks to the clutch pedal the clutch only does anything between there and there so from there to there it doesn't do anything there it does something in that zone but from there to there it doesn't do anything either so you want to go quick, slow, quick it takes a long time to get used to don't worry about this if you keep stalling it takes hours and hours and hours of practice to get used to this I know it looks so simple you think well all I do is lift my foot but don't forget you've got to be pressing the gas now I'm going to go into this in quite some detail now what I'm going to do is clutch down one gas set the gas set the clutch okay now imagine I've looked around looking around there's no one there the handbag's going to come off the car starts to move slightly the gas goes down more, the clutch comes up a little bit and the car's moving. Now I'm going to stop there and on your driving lessons don't worry about um, stopping. On this lesson I will be stopping for the people, I'll be doing the braking. The only reason I'm not moving too far is unfortunately since I pulled up here, two cars have pulled up ahead of me because <laughs> I was going to be driving into the space where those cars are. Anyway yeah, so that's how you make a car move off in the basic way. So what I did there was I did clutch into first gear set the gas very important gas comes before the clutch nearly all the time gas going down clutch went up i released the handbrake then when i got moving i did more gas and the clutch up slowly you must learn to coordinate your feet and the first dock say it's quite hard it feels really clumsy if you put your right foot down too much or your left foot up too much like this if you get a mismatch so that one goes down really slow that one comes flying up you'll get a stall so when the two clutch plates come together lock and they don't have time to lock, they bounce off each other and sort of bang like this and then um, it's what makes your car stall so 
what else did I not do there? I'm going to cover this over and over again, so don't worry if that doesn't make much sense. Because I'm going to come back to this topic over and over in all the lessons that we do. Moving away is one of the main things. It's often said that there are only really four things you actually learn when you learn to drive. You learn to move off, to brake, to turn left and to turn right. If you think about it, everything else you do when you're driving, and I class reversing by the way is moving off, um, it all comes back to one of those four things. You either move off, stop, slow down, brake, whatever same thing, turn left or turn right. So what you're really learning when you learn to drive is four things. You then learn how to adapt those four things into different situations for roundabouts, crossroads and all that kind of thing. Okay, so what have I haven't I done so far? What have I missed out that I deliberately haven't done so far? Well, I did it briefly, but before we go, we need to check that it's safe to go. You can't just move off when you feel like it, like some drivers do. So, before you go, what you need to do is check around. Now, there are three places you need to check as a minimum. Yes, you can do more, um, but the three minimum places you must check are the rear view mirror, that middle mirror in the centre of the car, so I can see what's coming directly behind me. The right mirror there, so I can see what's coming to the right of me, if anything, at the moment, nothing. Where else do you need to check, do you know? It's a place called, we mentioned before, called the blind spot. The blind spot is over my right shoulder. There. Hi everyone, I've had to edit this part of the video because in the original one that I made, just when I was talking about the blind spot, this car came past with music on really loud, it was blaring out loud. And he pulled up on the right of me and then moved off again. Now when I uploaded it onto YouTube, um, my video got blocked because he said it was music copyright something, you know, against copyright laws. Because YouTube has this system that can hear music in videos, and if you're using somebody else's music, um, it blocks your video. So unfortunately, because of that, I've had to edit the whole video again. So anyway, the only part of the video you missed was where I was demonstrating the blind spot. So if I take the camera off the windscreen now, I'll just show you where the blind spot is. So, your blind spot is an area just to the right of you. So if I just take this off and put it there, that there, that is the car's blind spot. So when you're moving off, that's where you need to check as well. So all I did in the video was talk about that and I looked like that. It's an area that you can't see in any of the mirrors. Um, if you can, the mirrors are set correctly. So yeah, that's the only part of the video you missed. So let's get back now to the main video. You do the minimum is the middle mirror, the right mirror, your blind spot. If there are cars around like there are now, you may decide not to go. But if you are going to go, what do I need to do? For example, that car in front, um, that was an instructor who's pulled up who's having a lunch break or something, or it's tea break. It's probably waiting for an evening people, an evening lesson, you know, to start with the people. Now, if I think that there's anyone around who would benefit from a signal, I would signal. You don't have to indicate when you move off. So I call it an indication, a signal, whatever you want to call it. Um, you don't have to always indicate. If there's no one around like now, I wouldn't bother. I know there's someone behind getting out of the car, but they're not going to care. If there's no road user that would be concerned by it, then you don't have to indicate. However, for the sake of this video, well, I am going to, um, because I want to demonstrate how you would do that. So that's the full move knock procedure. It's a lot to remember, but it's clutch down, select first gear, apply the gas, clutch up to the biting point, check the middle mirror, check the right mirror, check the right blind spot, indicate if necessary, release the handbrake, apply more gas, raise the clutch slowly. What I like to remember that is, and unfortunately it's one of the first things you have to learn, um, but it is quite hard, and I know if you're an experienced driver you might be watching this video saying, oh that's easy, I'll do that in two minutes. It's not easy, it becomes easy, but it's not easy, and as instructors I always have to remind myself what it was like when I first learned to drive. Um, I don't want to sound a big head, I was quite a natural driver, I picked it up quite quickly, but even I remember stalling and then um, get into a few scrapes and a few different situations. Um, but yeah, don't worry if this takes a while to pick up, it will take a while. Um, it takes a minimum norm normally about 40 hours of lessons to be anywhere near a test standard, and that's just with an instructor. So don't worry if it takes a long time to pick these things up. Some people take months, some people take years. It doesn't matter, um, it's up to you, we all learn at different speeds. Anyway, I'll try not to ramble much longer. Let's go back to the, uh, the moving away. Okay, so all we do is clutch down, select first gear, apply a little bit of gas, like that, 
apply a little bit of clutch so the clutch comes up to the bottom of the biting point check the middle mirror check the right mirror check the right blind spot I'll indicate because it's very handy that car's just gone and I'll move off now so I'll break, gas goes down clutch comes up and I move away I'm going to get to second and go a little bit further up the road um, so don't be what I'm doing now this is, you, know, you wouldn't be expected to do this straight away but yeah, that's how you make a car move off. I'm just going to pull over on the left here. Don't worry about the pulling over. We'll be going over that in another video. Now pull over there. Okay, so that's how you make a car move off. Now bear in mind that is the minimum you need to know. Um, I'm not going to go into every great detail just yet because I should be doing that more in the videos that I do with pupils. And you'll see the pupil try and go over and over again. You can also, of course, run this video back and watch it again and again. So I don't need to keep doing it over and over and over. You can just run the video back and watch that again if you want to. But, yeah, that's what you do. That's how you make a car move off. So it's clutch down into first gear. Apply some gas. Lift the clutch slightly. Middle mirror, right mirror, right blind spot. Signal if needed. Handbrake comes off. Apply the gas. Lift the clutch. And off you go. So, yeah, that's how you do that. Okay, so that's how you make a car move off. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment below and I'll try and get back to you. As always, remember to like the video, remember to subscribe to my channel, it does really help me get more popular and it helps give me more encouragement to make these videos. In the next lesson, we're going to have a look at moving off up the hill. So as you can see now, we're facing up a hill. Um, it's quite different moving off up a hill. There's only a slight difference, but it can feel very different. So I hope you've enjoyed that lesson. From that, you should have learned how to make a car move off. Now again, it is better when you actually do it in real life because it's, it's hard to watch a video and to get the feel of the car. But I hope that helps you if you're learning to drive or thinking of learning to drive and you want to just get some idea of what to do. So that's all for now and I'll see you again soon in the next video.